I'll try to provide a very practical um, uh, a very practical approach to what you have discussed, uh, Daniela. You you br brought some theory uh, into this. I'll try to bring some uh, practice into building this uh, interface. Um, and this is actually, um, over the years as an urban metabolism researcher, uh, I have been extremely frustrated into many things. And I'll try to share my frustrations and hopefully um, together if we can solve our frustrations all together by developing common tools. And I think that today we have mentioned how important it is to collaborate and how important it is to build collaborative tools that can communicate between one case study to another, between one city to another, between one context to another. Uh, just a context, so I also did my PhD on urban metabolism. I struggled to find data. Luckily, Brussels was a, a rich uh, data um, case study, and there was already back in the 70s a lot of data. So it was quite easy to, to work in this field, although back in the day there was not a lot being done. Um, but I, w I also felt, because I was alone in, the, in this uh, sphere, that I had to reach out to many other researchers out there that are working on the same field. And actually many uh, of my colleagues were in South Africa, in the, the US, in other European cities, and they also felt the same thing. They did urban metabolism and they felt alone uh, in, in this concept because it's so um, systemic. You, you have to, to, to bridge a number of things and because in academia you're very siloed as well, uh, we, we kind of didn't find a place for us to fit. So this is where Metabolism of Cities was created before it was called actually MFA Tools. Um, and the idea was how can we develop a place where information, um, knowledge and tools can be gathered, centralized and also develop open source tools for, for the community. So uh, I'll present to you some of the tools we have created and I think would be useful for this community. Uh, some other tools were presented this morning and I, I really am very eager to, to well, join forces in order to, to make them compatible. Um, in the tools, I, I kind of see two or three different tools to, uh, to, to bridge this, um, this gap between science, policy and practice. Um, I think there are tools into knowledge and learning. Uh, a lot of people mentioned we're, we're missing information. Where do we find this information? Uh, it's so complex, but uh, I want to get started. But how do I start? So um, Andre, who's right somewhere over here, uh, was actually the, the first one that uh, they commissioned us to do an um, online course on urban metabolism for policymakers. Uh, that was done already some years ago. Um, and the idea was to provide uh, some knowledge for policymakers. Of course, we should rethink of doing this for uh, other uh, segments of uh, population. It could be for practitioners, it could be for uh, citizens, it could be for many other segments. But the idea was to start with already something, an uh, online course on uh, urban metabolism and how it can be applied in policymaking. So this is out there already. Um, and also gathering the knowledge out there. Um, we have uh, a number of uh, case studies. We have found actually articles, reports, policy documents. Um, I'll try to show you that directly so you can, the next time where, when you have time to lose, you'll, you'll procrastinate on, on our website. Um, so this is the, the, the website. It has known some uh, uh, iterative changes. In resources, you can find a number of things, including the publication list. Um, and over there, you can find, if you're interested into one, um, uh, let's say, publication in one city for one flow, you can start filtering them up over here. We have around 300 publications for cities, uh, but we have 700 publications at other scales as well, so countries or regions or islands. Um, and then you can start seeing where they are, see which city it is, see which uh, uh, well in, uh, publication it is, etc., etc. And then you can also filter them by flow or by sector, etc., etc. So that was already 
something to be done. We needed to centralize all of the information because there is so much production today. We kind of need to, to know what is out there and um, kind of pass the excuse of where is it? Uh, now, of course, <laughs> that's one thing to, to put everything together. The other thing is, of course, to know that this exists and this is out there. The second one is analysis. We, we definitely have mentioned an analysis today um, and we definitely have mentioned the need of common analytical tools. So that was the second, um, let's say, challenge that we wanted to, to face was when, when you look at urban metabolism studies in the literature, many of uh, the researchers and practitioners are actually using different ways to approach the thing. They measure different flows, they measure flows in different ways, and because it's so different, we can compare them, and we're stuck in, and we have to start all over again. And the same thing starts, if one of you starts to analyze Brussels, well, there have been already two or three studies in Brussels, but if you don't find the data, and if you, the data are not there, then you have to start all over again, so you're losing your time, you're losing money again, etc., etc. So how do we come about this? Well, there are some uh, challenges around urban metabolism data, and uh, that's, we think we should not have these challenges anymore. We should go to the extra step, which is actually analysis. So the challenges are, of course, it's a time-consuming fact. A number of people are mentioning this, and you mentioned it uh, uh, as well, um, Daniela. We're lacking time, and we want more funding to have more time into doing all of this. So um, collecting data is data-consuming. Many times it's difficult to access um, because of, of confidentiality issues, but also because uh, we don't find it. And sometimes this data is open data, but open data does not mean it's accessible. You have to find it, and uh, you can spend hours and hours in to do that. It's also scattered because of the silos and all of this. Um, I spent two years to kind of find information on Brussels, knocking on doors, uh, looking in archives and all of this, and the next person has to do it all over again. And then it's inconsistent format, so energy can be measured in gigawatt hours, in calories, in many different ways, and so the different agencies will have different formats. So this is one of the main challenges, and this is why I'm going to show you one of the dashboards that we're developing on urban metabolism. And the idea is to have a centralized platform where we can put all of the data there. It's, as whatever we do in Metabolisms of Cities, open source. Um, so you can just copy all of our codes and use it in your own city or case study for free. Um, but of course, we're trying to have an academic rigor behind all of this. So we're trying to, to have as much as um, a rigorous database system and a rigorous way to account flows. And what's very different from most of um, examples out there is that is community driven. So all of you can actually upload data. Any of the citizens in the world can upload the data and you don't need a commission from a city to actually do that. It can be a bottom up initiative and not only a top down initiative. Let me just show you how this works in a second. Um, so over here, if you go to cities, you can look at some prototypes. And of course, we have online um, um, video tutorials of how to do all of this. Um, so you have your city, you have some sectors that you want to analyze. And what you, what you can see are data sets, maps, information on, let's say, documents, uh, and then some photos, reports, and all of that. Let's go into a specific sector for Cape Town to have a look how this works. Um, so let's take the waste sector. Uh, what we generally try to do is to, put, to provide gen general information on a sector. So waste generation, waste collection, all of the kind of segment of, uh, of waste. Then we kind of visualize some of the data sets that we could find. We can very easily upload it into the, the system. Let me just show you something over here. So this is the general waste entering disposal um, facilities. You see what is the source of the data set. You see how many data points, who has included this. Um, and you can, of course, download the file and do it yourself. And there is also some data quality. So because data is so, sp well, y you know how difficult it is sometimes to, to um, 
trust some of the data, we also have some data quality insurance. But all of this is uh, based on open community things. So someone can add the data, someone else can say, wait, this data set I'm not sure is so relevant, perhaps I would give different scores. Um, and then you can visualize it as you want in different formats. Um, you can visualize it in table forms and you can download the data if you want. Um, so this is the data component. Uh, and then we mentioned a lot of uh, space. Uh, how do we spatialize data? Uh, we've also tried to spatialize the infrastructure of some flows. And then if you have information, of course, you can also add information for specific infrastructures every time. So this is um, one um, uh, refuse transfer site. Because we know where it is, we know what it looks like. Uh, and then we have data for this specific site over there, et cetera, et cetera. And this is just for the, uh, so this is how it works in general, but all of you can very easily upload data. Uh, you can choose what type of data you want. Uh, it can be material flows, material stocks, but also articles. And you can build your own dashboard for your own city immediately if you want. So we're trying to take out all of the barriers and all of the excuses why urban metabolism is not really being used. One of it is cost. The other one is, uh, well, we need to centralize information. The other one is we need to visualize it somehow. And because we think that policymakers and city officials should not spend all of their money into actually doing the data collection pr uh, practice, but actually changing the metabolism really and working on experimentations, we're trying to lift off these barriers. Now, this is only at the city level. Uh, the next plans are we have some friends um, that are very interested into the islands. And because islands are like the, the quintessence, uh, well, if you want to work on, uh, on circular economy, islands are a perfect laboratory because they have delimited spaces. So we also have a sister website called Metabolism of Islands where researchers are doing the same for islands. Um, and the idea is now that we're doing metabolism of nations and metabolism of regions. We're not there yet, but we want to have these extra steps. The idea is that all of these, of course, websites are interlinked. So when someone adds a publication somewhere, you can see it from the other websites. And when you're going to have, let's say, a national uh, metabolism of nations, then you would know what are all of the cities that I have in the other uh, platform and then see it there. Vice versa, we were talking uh, with Mariana in the morning about what are the scaling factors at a national scale. So if we have the nation uh, for the city we're studying in, then you look directly at all of the data at the, the national scale and you can do this process automatically. And then the last thing we're trying to do, which was actually funded by Vlander and Circulaire, is, is do the same thing, but for companies. Um, so a material flow accounting for companies, uh, where companies can uh, in, well input all their information about input flows, output flows. And once you have this information, you can do many solutions. So if you know all of the output flows and the input flows of one company, then you can start doing the famous matchmaking of flows, for instance. You can also start thinking about where do I centralize infrastructure if I know that companies are actually uh, have this type of waste flow, et cetera, et cetera. And the idea behind all of this, and it's not there yet, but the idea behind all of this is that as all of these platforms are linked, you would know where the flows from the companies are within your city. So if you know that a company has exchanged you know, materials with another company within your city, then you directly know that your city has increased their circularity by a bit. So all of this can help us to have more <coughs> streamlined and updated information on all of these data sets. It's not only top-down information anymore, but we can start populating it from the bottom up. Um, there is one segment I didn't discuss, but it's on our to-do list, but at the very bottom, it's metabolism of households. Of course, all of us live in households and we consume, and perhaps there is more to be done over there. 
So in the analytical perspective, this is, let's say, the tools that we have been developing and we think might be relevant. Of course, uh, the more inputs and the more collaboration we have for all of this would be great. Again, all of this is free, it's open source, so please use it as much as you can. Um, and then there is the last element I wanted to, to add over here for the open tools. So I mentioned multiplicity. Uh, so far where we are is in the data warehouse phase, which means this is a urban metabolism dashboard. We don't refuse any type of data set, we include everything. But of course, it's very difficult because every city has a different amount of data sets than others and other flows are represented in one city and not in the other. The next step would be to have a much more streamlined approach. So we want to have the same flows for all of the cities and if there is not, uh, a bit what was mentioned in the morning, if there is no uh, sufficient data, then we provide estimations for this. And the last one would be the data analyzer uh, analysis phase which anyone could plug in any tool or model within this uh, data warehouse or data um, um, dashboards, and you could predict scenarios. What if, uh, so what if Brussels had 200,000 um, uh, more inhabitants by 2030, which is more or less the, the, the scenario? What if um, we have more circular economy jobs in Flanders? What if, and all of that, because today we are very much at the, we're struggling already to get data, but we're not very good at doing these scenarios, as mentioned Daniela. So this would be the ultimate phase of these tools. I showed you how we can include all of these. Um, and the idea is we have been, uh, so these are the tutorials, you can find them on the, on the website, how to include all of the data quite easily. We have been now doing what we call datathons. So we go to cities, um, some cities ask us to, to go there and they implement the data in the course of an um, afternoon, a day, two days, it depends on, on the case study. Uh, we've done this in a couple of cities and we hope that normally we shouldn't be there anymore as well. This could be a self-provided um, um, service by uh, city officials that do, they, that, do that for themselves. Um, and we also had back in the day an uh, online material flow analysis tool, but this is a bit in the graveyard right now. Um, this is typical material flow analysis, but this was uh, not as appealing as the, that, uh, as the dashboard I mentioned. This was the material flow accounting for companies. And then the last bit I wanted to, to touch a moment ab about is we need community building tools. Um, learning is one thing, knowledge is one thing, analysis is the other thing. But we need to figure out ways that the, the wonderful people that you are remain in, in the loop of information and continue to work together and we need to find ways to do that. Uh, there are easy ways, uh, so we've tried to develop this circular metabolism community. Some of you are already part of it, the ones that are not, please email me and I'll include you. This is an informal community around people, so there is a, a, a forum uh, where we kind of exchange information about all of this. There's a calendar. Because there are so many events out there in the topic, we hardly have time to actually know what they are and keep up with all of these. So if you have more events, you can put them there and everybody can receive them in their calendars. Um, and well, in the case of, uh, of Belgium, we've tried to pinpoint all of the initiatives that exist out there, but of course there are thousands and thousands more in Belgium and thousands and thousands more in the Netherlands and in other countries, but it could be a centralized place to, to have information. Um, there is also, we're trying to, to, well, we have a podcast around all of these topics and we try to interview relevant uh, st uh, stakeholders and uh, experts to continue this discussion after this event. So continue having some information on all of this. Um, Three years ago, we did this seminar. We're trying to have, we, unfortunately, we should do this more often, I guess. I don't know what the structure is, and we, have the, we will have this discussion very soon. But um, so far, 
we're trying informally to develop some more tools. I think we need to go the extra mile in the very in the very near future and we have to think together what are those tools that we need to build our community. Um, these are the, the couple of things that we have been doing, but uh, your input will be most uh, welcome at the end of, of the debate of this. So thanks.